We seem to be quite close to a, a vaccine, and you're also taking part in a trial. Any concerns? Well, yeah. Well, good morning. Um, so, you know, I've, I've decided to personally participate in the vaccine study because I think that, you know, we all talk and we all really want to get back to normal as quickly as possible. And in order to do that, we have to stand up and participate, all of us, as many as we can, as quickly as we can, in the various vaccine trials. And um, my vaccine trial is currently on pause. I'm enro planning to enroll and signed up for the AstraZeneca vaccine. Um, it was the one most convenient to me being offered by colleagues at Johns Hopkins. Um, so it, it, it really didn't have to do with any specific safety profile for, in my mind. It was more about the convenience of access. Um, but, but yeah, I, I, like everyone else, want to get back to normal. And so I raised my hand to participate. Plus, as a researcher, it's my ethical obligation to also participate if I'm enrolling patients in, in trials. Uh, you know, Jason, how far away are we from a, a viable vaccine that is also distributed to enough people in the world? Oh, goodness. That's a, you know, a $10 billion question. Um, I, I think that we are, you know, Many people enrolled in the trials around the world are still getting, waiting on a second dose, right? They're, they're enrolled in most uh, of the vaccines have at least two doses. Uh, and then we need time to follow them um, after that second dose. You get your biggest boost of immune response after dose two. Um, and then you need potential time for exposure. Uh, and so uh, depending where the vaccine is around the world, some are a little bit ahead of others, um, we, we just need additional time. So for in the United States, for example, we are talking about not having really strong evidence. We're talking at least 90 days, preferably six months to, to a year afterwards. Um, but those vaccines are, are likely not even enrolling their second doses most of the time until October into November. And so if you say at its absolute warp speed, you're really talking about the beginning of 2021 before we have at least 90 days of data from those people. Jason, how critical is it that we understand as soon as possible, you know, some of the effects of COVID-19 on the underserved and vulnerable populations? Well, I think we, we clearly have shown that across the country that all vulnerable groups, um, whether it's from overcrowding or poverty, have increased risk of the infection itself. Right? So that's the first thing, the epidemiology. And then the clinical consequences of the infection. So vulnerable populations, any population experiencing lots of poverty, poor access to care, have more underlying comorbidities, which we have seen to be the direct cause of the greatest amount of morbidity and mortality. And so when you see concentrations of poverty and concentrations of comorbidity in populations, you see greater amounts of disease. Jason, what is the one thing that you'd want to know about COVID-19 right now? Is it, you know, why some people have it worse than others? Is it the long haulers? Is it something else that we're forgetting? Yeah, I think I think that you know, it's still unlocking the mysteries of the cytokine storm in many patients, trying to understand why, you know, some very healthy people go on to progress and, and ultimately to require uh, hospitalization, ICU admission, and then ultimately ventilation and death. Uh, is still a, a mystery. We, we know some of the mechanics, but we don't know why some people versus other people. Um, we also still, the long-term sequelae of infection, uh, in, inflamed heart, cardiomyopathy, you know, neurologic complications that are persistent in some people but not in others uh, are still a mystery. Uh, and then finally, um, we don't know if the vaccine will respond in the same way in all populations. And so that's why it's really critical. For example, most of the vaccine trials right now are only enrolling those 18 years and older. And so we've got to get more data on, on pediatric and adolescent case uh, vaccine use.